Perfect, and welcome everyone to Willis ISD's District Dynamics for September uh, 1st, 2016. Uh, education is exciting, great things are happening Willis ISD. Uh, we stand together as one team, one purpose, focus on the success of all students. And uh, we are off to a great start in the school year. Uh, first couple weeks are always uh, crazy, and, and this year uh, we, we had some interesting events from the maintenance and operations side of things. We had a lightning storm about a week ago that struck Metter and knocked out our PA system that also hit our high school and messed up PA system and bell schedule. So there's nothing like the many surprises, but uh, everything with kids and teachers and staff were great. Uh, that's why we budget uh, maintenance and operation funds to take care of those uh, little happenings that take place that you never plan for. But uh, anyway, it was a great start. Uh, we're up over 7,200 students this year, which is about a two and a half percent enrollment growth over this same time last year. So we're very excited about the continued growth of Willis ISD and uh, the bond program that we've got underway right now is, is preparing for that continuous growth. Uh, so that's very exciting. We also recently received uh, our academic accountability rating for 2016. And as a district, we met standard again. And we've met standard as a district each year under the STAR system, uh, which began back in 2013. So we're proud of the hard work and dedication of our staff and especially our students. Uh, we do know that this te current testing environment can create a uh, really a, a negative stressful type uh, situation for kids and teachers but uh, we, we focus on the, delivering the best education we can for our kids and if we prepare them uh, we know they'll step up and perform and uh, so we're excited and, and proud of them and their accomplishments and, and looking forward uh, for continued growth as we prepare for the 2017 uh, testing season and uh, just just a quick reminder we uh, or the last public meeting was August 17th we had a special meeting at noon which was to finalize our 2016-17 budget uh, everything went well with that. The tax rate remains stable now uh, at $1.04 for the last six years in operations. Uh on the interest and sinking side stayed at 35 cents for a total of dollar 39 and i believe we've kept that now for the last three years i believe my first year we went up a penny uh so actually two pennies at that point in time it was a dollar 37 so the last three years we've stayed at a dollar 39 and uh, that's exciting from a standpoint of we just passed our bond last november which was 109.5 million dollars and during all my bond presentations of course everyone wanted to know how would that affect our taxes and the maximum tax increase when we passed that would have been uh, 0.0675 cents. So almost seven cents, uh, worst case scenario. Very proud to say that we have sold 70 million of those bonds and it had zero impact on our tax rate. And we're feeling pretty confident when we sell the remaining 39.5 uh, this coming spring, January, February. We're feeling really good that we're going to be able to pass this entire bond project uh, potentially with zero tax increase at all to our taxpayers. So uh, excited about that. Uh, you know, taking care of our money and being fiscally responsible is extremely important to the administration, myself and my school board. And uh, I think we've done a very good job with that. Uh, the maintenance and operations budget was approved at $57,560,307. That is up $53 million from last year. And our debt service side budget is $10,883,275. And this year is our largest debt uh, payment uh, that we'll have. And, and that payment will get less and less uh, as we move forward. So this is kind of the, the biggest year there. Then it slides down a little bit. We base our budget each year on 0% growth. Um, and by doing that, in any student growth that we do get during the course of a year, we get additional funding at the end of the year. We had the same thing this last year. We ended up growing by about 290 students. Uh, and to be able to have a balanced budget based on no growth, uh, and I think it's a great job of Tammy Moore and her department and our leadership team and, and the school board moving forward. And uh, the biggest, another big issue with our budget this year, our board uh, set a goal last January after my evaluation that we they wanted us to try to give the staff a 5% raise. Uh, that's 
a, a large raise. Uh, we, uh, anytime we can give any raise, uh, we're, we're happy with it. And uh, we were able to pull that off. Uh, starting salary now is $46,000 uh, for a first-year teacher, which I think keeps us competitive in the Montgomery County market, especially with us being self-funded on our uh, current insurance program. We're able to offer insurance benefits that are competitive with the state's program and actually possibly even a little better, but at uh, lower cost to our employees. So uh, budget process has been great this year. Excited about moving forward. And our next uh, regular schedule board meeting is Wednesday, September 14th at 6 o'clock. If you're interested in attending that, we'd love to have you out. And uh, speaking of the bond, let's talk a little bit about our uh, designs. We showed those at the board. I believe it was at our regular meeting uh, back in August. They were able to see some design concepts. Uh, actually, it was at that uh, August 17th special meeting. And uh, excellent. If you would like to take a look at those, you can go to our website, willisisd.org. Uh, go under, uh, post it under bond 2015 updates. We've got pictures there for you of those design concepts. They hit the courier about a month ago as well. Uh, and I think you'll, you'll see that we wanted something that would be obviously very appealing to us, something that's, that we don't currently have in Willis from a design concept, but it also, I think, blends in with the environment and, and, and doesn't stand out in a negative way. I think uh, we got a lot of oohs and ahs uh, from folks in attendance at that meeting. Uh, board was extremely pleased with them, and I think you will be too. Uh, CTN Center and our Ag Center will be located right behind the current Willis High School, which if you know where the auxiliary field is to the back, is to that west side that's currently all wooded right now so we will architects were exciting we will still have a lot of tree lines there uh, many times they don't get to work in those concepts so they're excited about the opportunity to to build in amongst the trees and uh, we think it'll have a great backdrop our agricultural science center will be located right behind it and then our new auditorium uh, that I think the district is, is definitely has been in need with for some time will be on the northeast side of the campus, which will be right out in front of the softball complex where it currently sits. So it have a great view from uh, 75 and uh, Turner Elementary as well. So uh, excited about getting that venue opened up. We had advertised we were going to try to make that a thousand seat uh, auditorium. We decided to go with the balcony design, and we think by going with the balcony, uh, because it was a tighter spot, we're going to be able to get probably 1,100 to 1,150 seats uh, in the auditorium. So uh, excited about moving forward with those projects. They'll go out, all three of those out for bid later this fall with construction to begin early 2017, and all will open in August of 2018. So we'll have some heavy construction periods coming up here pretty soon. Uh, speaking of, as we've gone through some of our different projects um, at Burton 88 Stadium, our AstroTurf field and ins turf installation is done. New scoreboard is being completed as well. And uh, looking forward to getting that facility opened up. And speaking of Friday night football, obviously our, our band is a big part of Friday night uh, action. But also Chris Allen, our director of bands, does an outstanding job uh, promoting his band, growing the numbers there. And uh, because of his hard work and dedication, along with his students, they have been invited to perform at the 2017 Music for All National Festival, March 9th through 11th in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, it's a festival that showcases some of the largest top high school bands in the nation, and we are one of only two bands in the state of Texas that will be a f uh, featured uh, presenter uh, on the large stage, and uh, Chris and his kids are very happy about that. Their first day of, of camp that started a few weeks ago, I was able to show up at 7 that morning when he kind of unveiled the surprise to parents and kids, and uh, at first, they didn't really know what was going on. They saw the, the, the video and, and thought it was kind of cool, thought it was exciting. And then once they realized what they were able to actually get to do, uh, they were thrilled about that. So I think it just showcases Chris's hard work and dedication and, uh, and those kids. They, they work as hard as any program that we have. And leading back, a couple things I wanted to update you on the turf that you'll notice uh, if you can come out and check it out. We've got some bright purple end zones. Uh, we wanted to keep and stay very traditional to Willis's purple and white uh, color scheme. And uh, then our large uh, Texas logo with the W is located in the middle of the field. Uh, you'll also notice when you get there, there's some black lines around. And some folks may wonder, what are those black lines? Those are for soccer. 
our soccer field pays on there and, and none of the uh, color schemes on that field are painted. It is all colored turf, so there's no paint on there. Uh, the soccer uh, kids will be excited. New goals and stuff come with all the bells and whistles. And you will also notice that every five yards, is uh, it's two-toned. We have two different uh, colored turfs. There's a dark green and a light green. And if you're wondering what that is, if you notice games on TV, uh, if you mow a regular grass field, which direction you mow, it looks, it kind of gives a color contrast. And and that's kind of the, the thought process. It is AstroTurf, but you kind of give the real grass uh, look and feel, and I think it, it dresses it up a little bit. So if you are wondering why, yes, that was done by design, and it was not an accident, and I think you'll be very pleased with the way it looks. Um, and leading up to sports updates, our girls' volleyball team has been getting it af after it since August the 1st. They are our first group to come back even before the football team and about the time the band comes. And uh, they've been... Great year so far. Had the best year in the history of Willis uh, High School last year. Uh, they're 14 and 15 record right now. That's through non district. They had a very uh, tough uh, non district schedule. Big tournaments with super uh, powerhouses across the state at Magnolia and also in Leander. And we've really been without two of our star senior captains, Abby Irvin and Ty Johnson. Both of them have had uh, knee injuries. Abby just had to have a, a surgery. She's going to be out a couple weeks. Ty had an ACL tear uh, this last, uh, I think, early spring with club volleyball. She working, we're working her to get back uh, healthy, but to be 14 and 15 with uh, a lot of young players getting some experience has been outstanding. And I think it's gonna really lead when we hit district play uh, here in a week from Friday on September 9th. Uh, it's really gonna pay off in a very uh, tough uh, district schedule. So proud of Coach Ferris and the girls. They're doing a very good job and looking forward to uh, a great district campaign as well. Our cross-country team performed well at the Mud, Sweat, and Cheers Relays in Caldwell a few weeks ago. And I'm sure with the rain we've been having, there was plenty of mud. And that does not sound like fun running, uh, at least not to me. Uh, but our guys got after it. They came in second. Girls Varsity took third out of a total of 15 teams. Jamie Vega, who was a state qualifier last year in the mile and two mile as a freshman, had the top uh, time overall for the boys. And uh, they ended up being the second place finish behind A&M Consolidated. And our football team opened up their uh, season last week with a 21-6 win over MacArthur. Uh, Friday night games will be broadcast on a tape delay beginning 60 minutes after the game begins at texasfootsurgeons.com slash broadcast. So if you're interested in checking out the game, if you can't be there uh, about an hour after, you'll be able to pick up and hear how our cats do. Our next game will be, home game will be Friday, September 9th. Actually, the next game will be set Friday, September 9th versus Huffman Hargrove at Falcon Field. So we will kick off there at 7. So we'll have to travel over to Huffman there for our third game of the year. And our athletic luncheons have begun. And if you're looking for a, a good lunch here over the next 8 to 10 weeks uh, at a good price and you want to support athletics at Willis ISD, uh, please come out next 10 weeks. The athletic department holds a luncheon at Willis Community Center from 12 to 1. Each week we introduce some of our far fall sports team leaders. That's always all the way from high school all the way into middle school. Lunch is catered by All Star and tickets cost $10 for adults, $4 for students, and all proceeds go towards student scholarships. And I believe last year the Masons uh, helped work uh, handing, giving out the food and stuff and all the preparation and drinks and things and they gave several thousand dollars uh, all of this money goes back to uh, students and seniors at Willis ISD so it's a great way to, to be supportive of our kids and um, get you lunch so if you're out and about on Thursdays over the next 10 weeks uh, please stop by and, and I think you'll be greatly entertained uh, but thank you for joining us for this first uh, section we've got some special guests which, with us that you're not going to want to miss we'll be right back Lone Star Community Radio is FM. That's right. Set your radio dials and your button presets to Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1, coming in June of 2016. To celebrate this edition and the addition of video versions of our talk and music shows on YouTube, cable TV, and Our City TV, we are offering special sponsorships rates, which include 
free audio spots that are played throughout our broadcast. Interested? Check out our sponsor rates for shows just like the one you're listening to online at IRLoneStar.com slash sponsor or call the station at 936-647-5747. Reaching the people of Montgomery County with Montgomery County's community radio station with Lone Star Community Radio. Back to Willis ISD's Districts Dynamics. I'm your host, Tim Harkrider. And up next, our first guest is a friend of mine that we have known each other, I guess, going on about four years, Miss Sarah Goolsby, who is our new Dean of Instruction at Willis High School. Sarah, how are you? I, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this has been, uh, Sarah and I, uh, we met each other uh, a few years ago at some trainings, and uh, we be- stayed in touch and become friends. And to have the opportunity to bring Sarah to work for me at Willis ISD uh, has been fun, exciting for me. I hope it has been for her. I've worked her pretty hard this summer. I think she has been uh, baptism by fire, but uh, she's done a great job at the high school. And, and Sarah, how are things going so far? Oh, it's going outstanding. To be able to work with uh, Mr. Utech and his staff um, has been outstanding experience, positive. You know, when you get into a, a campus where at every level it's student-centered, it's pretty amazing and that's amazing work I mean you don't have the challenges and obstacles that you may have other places but to be able to work with that strong admin team that strong team of teachers and and the wonderful kids that are at Willis High School uh, you know I'm honored to be a part of it awesome very good well she's got a uh, she's, she'll be a little shy she's got a very extensive leadership background uh, she brings a lot to the table her and Travis have uh, uh, meshed very well together early on and I think they make a great team which is uh, great for our staff there at the high school and, and even better it's great for kids uh, tell our audience a little bit about your background in education and, and, and what you've been doing and how you've got going Absolutely. I'm going into my 14th year in education, five of which uh, include uh, administrative experience at the secondary level, uh, superintendent, principal, and AP. Um, And prior to that, I was at uh, Magnolia ISD as a a teacher and an athletic trainer. Had some great opportunities to work with some great administrators there as well. So um, it's really been a, a, a fast road to trying to really serve kids and teachers at a larger on a larger scale. Yeah, and you know, Sarah and I had similar backgrounds. Administrative careers went really quick, uh, probably quicker than we ever dreamed about. But you know, sometimes the uh, trial by fire is, is a good thing, and, and she's uh, she's a go getter. Uh, talk a little bit about what was your attraction to come to Willis? Because I know you had some other opportunities, but when you and I talked. What, what was your catch to stay come here? I think when you're able to enter into a community that is entrenched in tradition and it's student-centered all the way um, at every capacity, uh, whether it's athletics, whether it's extracurricular fine arts, um, your ag programs, every program at every level from elementary to secondary, it is uh, a tradition of excellence. It's always really, let's raise that bar, let's be better than we were last year. Right. Let's make sure that we keep, keep great people around kids Mm -hmm. let's make sure that we provide great opportunities professionals Um, there I don't think that there's any point in time that uh, any one teacher educator in this system doesn't have an opportunity to grow Um, as an educator you look for that you Mm -hmm. look for people that are doing things right by kids and that's priority but also they're doing right by their people right that's awesome and you know what I think a part of what makes Willis special and and, and Sarah's worked in some smaller districts as well is that sense of community and, and sense of people at Willis really care about how the schools are doing. They want the schools to to do well. They're willing to give their their time, their energy, their money, whatever they can do to to help support. And you you don't get that everywhere. I've worked in larger district settings. I've worked in small district settings, some with a tremendous amount of support, some with not so much support. And uh, I think you and I both share the background that it takes all of us, community included, to educate and raise kids. And uh, it's it's definitely, I feel like it's a special place. Uh, Talk a little bit about education background. How many years you've been in education? Where'd you go to college? Things of that nature. Well, I got my uh, undergraduate in education from Texas A&M and my master's from Sam Houston State University in education uh, administration and um, have spent a lot of my administrative work working with professional learning, um, working with teacher effectiveness, with um, student-centered 
strategies, um, working in the classrooms to the classroom level and being a part of that curriculum and instruction part side of uh, what Texas public education is about right now. And we all know that, you know, we all, everyone has their struggles at every level, but um, my experience really is centered around what student-centered instruction looks like, mm -hmm. how to offer relevant ongoing opportunities for the staff, so that's been really been a, a huge part of my administrative uh, career. Right. And I, those of you who have listened to the show before know I, I bleed orange. I went to school at the University <laughs> of Texas. And, and I, wanna, I am not uh, biased from a standpoint of, see, I, I, I do not mind hiring <laughs> Aggies from time to time. Uh, so I, I can't overlook that, except uh, football season is beginning real soon. And It's going to be a, fr and a friendly hoping, rivalry. Well, I think both of our coaches are in the hot seat, so yeah. uh, they, they better get it figured out. Uh, uh, real quick, uh, talk a little bit about because I know you're coming into a new situation. You used a lot of uh, learning systems, learning people. What are some goals after you've been on the job now for about a couple months? What are some goals you have for the high school this year? I think the biggest part of my role um, is going to be in a servant capacity. I need to be able to know um, what teachers need uh, as as personal professionals in their classrooms to be able to do their job better and be able to offer opportunities for them to grow as professionals to really look at their instruction and serve them in that capacity and as for is for students as well I need to be able to be there for them for that engagement factor mm -hmm. you know every student should have the opportunity to be engaged and have that loan ownership and learning um, and I believe as, as Dean of Instruction at Willis High School it's it's my duty to serve those students and teachers and, and providing those opportunities and resources um, along with the administrative staff um, and Mr. Utex's uh, vision for Willis High School. I think it's a great opportunity to move forward and, and really ensure that student growth. Mm -hmm. that's, and, and that's, you'll hear Sarah talk quite a bit about uh, the engagement piece and, and, and moving kids forward. And, and she is uh, very supportive of staff. You know, a lot of times, I say a lot of times, some folks lead by uh, you tell people what to do. Uh, but she goes the step further to show them how she wants it done and, and can, can providing that ongoing support. And it's kind of one of those deals where you're, you're asking that you do, but you're going to do it. So let's just get it done. And uh, I think the staff has really taken to her. It's been a very positive vibe. Uh, Sarah brings a level of professionalism uh, to the job every day that people respect. They see the work she puts in, and, and she's not asking them to do anything that she's not willing to do herself. And um, as being the former principal at Willis High School it, it's a good staff and they they they're hungry for strong leadership uh, Travis and and I think you guys together are definitely going to bring that what's been your biggest challenge so far I think really get time management with as many roles um, as required as, as dean of instruction mm -hmm. really honing in on um, that specificity mm -hmm. without compromising what the task is at hand you know right. trying to make sure that it all fits in in a day making sure that I feel like I've, I've done my duty by students, by teachers, by the admin staff, and by the community of Willis. I think that's, that that's an adjustment to go from a district level um, to back into the campus. It's, it's just a different job. It's, it's not that um, you know it's harder or it's more difficult. It's just a different capacity mm -hmm. in which you have to ensure that you're building capacity at every level, but it's just with, with different tools and different resources. So I think that that's right. the biggest thing is readjusting to this, the specificity of the job. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at, those of you who are not in the business, a dean of instruction's job description was is just about as extensive as a principal. I mean, you could actually have a dean of instruction. You could actually name that an associate principal, which is becoming popular, uh, which is kind of like, I guess, an offensive or defensive quarter to, uh, coordinator to a head coach. Uh, but also, when I took – the high school principal position, I was finishing up my superintendent certification and my professor told me, he said, running a high school, a larger high school is just like running a smaller district because everything that's in that high school, a district has. And I didn't really know what he meant at first. After doing it for a year and sitting in the superintendent seat, I understand exactly it. High school activity, is, it doesn't stop. I mean, it's literally almost seven days a week that there is, is something going on, whether it's uh, activities for kids, student groups, whether it's academic meetings. I'm assuming your calendar's pretty booked up for a while. It definitely is. And anytime I, I get to be a part of something that the kids are doing and the teachers are doing, I want to be able to support that. Um, it is uh, definitely something that you don't have to look for something to do. There's always something going on because your teachers and, and, and your extracurricular people that are – 
it's not just that classroom time. They do right. much more outside of, of what their schedule looks like for kids, and you want to be a part of that because you want to be a part of that team, and I think that's what really makes Willis such a great place to work at is because it really is that team environment. Right. If there are struggles, people step in. Right. I mean, and it's just amazing to be a part of such a positive um, atmosphere, to mm-hmm. be a part of a team that, that you've got everyone's kind of Right. Shoulder to shoulder. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I go by, I visit campuses quite often. Usually uh, I'm on campus at least once every other week uh, checking. The uh, first couple weeks I'm there earlier to see if, if the smiles that I always have been seeing over the summer have turning to frowns or the bags under their eyes and you're still <laughs> smiling, which is a good thing. Uh, we are throughout the uh, district. I, I do think our staff in, for sure is looking forward to uh, the Labor Day weekend, but uh you're a big addition. We're excited about you having here and, and looking forward to uh, the leadership that you'll provide at Willis High School. Well, I'm honored to be here. I appreciate the opportunity, and I'll definitely do the best I can to serve your district. Good deal. Sounds good. We'll be right back. We're starting to film our talk shows and putting them on YouTube. Your favorite Lone Star Community Radio show can be seen on YouTube under our Lone Star Community Radio channel and on City of Conroe's Our City TV channel on Sudden Link Channel 12. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see the most recently released videos and find more information online at IRLoneStar.com slash TV. Welcome back to Willis ISD's District Dynamics. This is Jamie Fails, Director of Communications, and we're here to share some events that are going on around our schools this week and this month. We've got a lot of open house events going on in the coming weeks, and open house is really important, parents, because it gives you a chance to get in the school and meet your teachers and hear a little bit more about the curriculum, see what kind of environment your kids are in throughout the day. So I'll just kind of quickly run through the list. We've got Lynn Lucas Middle School on Thursday, September 8th at 6 p.m., Willis High School on Monday, September 12th at 5.30. Parmley, third through fifth grade, will be Tuesday, September 13th from 5.30 to 7. C.C. Hardy, third through fifth, will also be Tuesday, September 13th from 5.30 to 6.30. We'll have a busy day on Thursday, September 15th, as Turner, Cannon, and Parmley all host their pre-K and kinder through second grade. And then Metter Elementary will wrap things up with third through fifth on Tuesday, October 4th. And then Metter's kinder through second will be Thursday, October 6th. Don't have a whole lot of events hitting our campuses just yet, but we do have a book fair going on now through Friday, September 9th at Cannon Elementary. And they will wrap up that week with a special Grandparents Day event in conjunction with the book fair on Friday from 9 to 10 a.m. Talking about a little bit of our programs that we have in the district, now that we've got your kids back in school and you're building those routines at home, we want to let you know some of the ways that you can get involved on campuses. One of the things that we have going on is our mentoring program. This started three years ago. And the program is called RISE, which stands for Relationships Inspiring Students Education. And it's really a collaborative effort between community volunteers and district educators to positively influence a student's life. These mentors come in and they help build relationships with students that will inspire personal growth in and out of the classroom. So what we do is we look for students that, you know, might be falling through the cracks in one way or another or just need a little positive support and encouragement. And we pair them up with adults who want to dedicate 30 to 45 minutes a week. They meet for lunch and they can talk um, about their week, share a smile, give some encouragement, maybe provide an ear to listen or a heart to love. So up to this year, we've had mentors working at Lucas Middle School only, but beginning this year, we're expanding the program to other campuses. We are looking for many more volunteers that want to become mentors to our students, and we need them at Willis High School, at Brabham, our other middle school, as well as we're going to be launching the program at one of our elementary schools Um, in a small way starting at second grade. So if you are interested in becoming a mentor, we have a wonderful coordinator named Leanne Elmore. She is housed at Lynn Lucas Middle School, and you can just call the campus or stop by to get more information about signing up to become a mentor. We'd love to have you. September is our month of homecoming, so our game is actually on Friday, September 23rd. That week will be a big week. We have our parade on Monday, September 19th at 6 p.m., The parade will begin at Lynn Lucas Middle School, 
and Parmley Elementary with the elementary floats. And then immediately after the parade, we will hold Fire Up the Cats, which is a big pep rally at the stadium. And there we will introduce the football team, the cross country team, the volleyball team, and then of course the homecoming court and the sweetheart and bows from all the clubs and organizations at Willis High School. So if you are interested in homecoming, that game is on Friday, September 23rd. If you need more information about becoming part of the parade, you can call Sharon Walsh at the high school. And back to volunteering for just a second. If you don't feel like you are ready to become a mentor, but you want to get involved at events at your child's school, there's always a need for teachers uh, looking for people to cut up projects for their class, maybe from your house, come in and help run a, a classroom party, volunteer by going to a field trip. So it's really a good way to get involved and, and be able to see your kids during the day and then help out the teachers in the school. So there is a volunteer application packet at the school that you can pick up and fill out and then return to the human resources office and then they can get you approved to join in on that. We also wanna let you know about a fantastic thing that we have in our community that's for Willis ISD but also benefits really everyone in the entire surrounding area. We have a parent center that's located um, at Parmley Elementary, kind of next door to there in their annex. And it's open Monday through Thursday from 9.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. And the Parent Center provides access to many different resources, classes, and programs that are meant to help our parents have an easier time managing their life. So one of the things that we have available there is a clothes closet, and we provide gently worn clothing to families at absolutely no cost. So there's children's clothing, adult clothing, and shoes, and we're also now offering small appliances and some furniture. So of course, if you have donations that you would like to make, anybody is welcome to stop by at Parmley Elementary and drop off items to donate to families in need. There's also parenting classes that are offered at the center. There's English as a second language class every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And these classes are ongoing. So if you are interested in learning English, you can just join the class at any time. And then the fourth Wednesday of each month, we have nutrition classes from 1 to 2 p.m. So then in addition to some of these services, we have a couple of different support groups that meet regularly. There is a Circle of Friends group that meets the second Tuesday of the month from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. And that's an evening of sharing and encouragement for ladies. So you can bring a dish to share with the group and just spend time with other adults and talk about your week. If you want to attend Just For Us, they meet the second Tuesday, Tuesday of each month from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. And this is a class that provides support and education for families um, of children with special needs. So if you fit in that category, that's a great way to collaborate with other parents and get some tips and tricks for managing your life with your child with special needs. And then Madre Hispanas meets every Wednesday from 12 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. for educational and social purposes. So it's a just a good chance for moms to get together and share the things that are going on with them, and that class is led in Spanish. We have assistance with applications also at the Parent Center. So if you're needing to sign up for Medicaid or CHIPS, you can come in the first Wednesday of the month from 9 to a.m. to 2 p.m. to get help with that. And then we just also have a big resource center in there. We have a library, a computer lab, and additionally some sewing machines that are available for parent use. So if you're kind of getting um, a, a general theme here, we have a lot of parent activities. We have involvement groups, a lot of ways for you to join in and partner with Willis ISD on your child's education. We hope that you will join us and find a way that you can get in and fit in and be part of this wonderful community. So thank you for listening and we will be back shortly. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station, and we're looking for more talk shows and volunteer DJs for our music shows. If you're interested in having your own talk show on Lone Star, or always wanted to live out your dream of being a music DJ, contact Lone Star Community Radio online at irlonestar.com slash contact us, or call the station at 936-647-5747 for more information. Welcome back.
back to Willis ISD's District Dynamic. I'm your host, Tim Hark Ryder, and my next guest is our new principal at Cannon Elementary, Miss Tamara Good. Tamara, how are you? I am doing awesome. Thank awesome. you so much for having me. I've had Tamara worried a little bit. We <laughs> told her yesterday she was coming on the show. She's been a little worried about it. But uh, and, and I'm going to tell you, as an education leader or any leader, you, you know uh, once you get into the business, you are only as good as the staff that you can hire. And uh, I don't brag on myself very often, but I am going to brag that I got me a good one here. <laughs> She's, Thank uh, you. She came highly recommended. Uh, her principal from Conroe ISD actually told me he would be more than happy to come to the board meeting that I was going to hire her and tell my board you have stolen a chance. <laughs> so uh, anyway, you, you don't get those praises very often from your colleagues or at least get to hear what they think about you after you leave. But I can promise you, you were very well thought of. So. Thank you. Uh, I'm thrilled to have you here. I'm thrilled to be Whether here. Whether I stole you or kidnapped you or whatever, <laughs> you're here, so it doesn't matter. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background. Okay. Well, I'm originally from Dallas, Texas. Um, I came to Houston, to the University of Houston. Go Cougs. I know we're going to have a great win against OU this <laughs> coming weekend. Um, and then much of my time has been spent um, within the city of Houston. Spent some time in HISD. Um, had a wonderful experience um, working with students there. Made my way up north um, and spent some time in Klein ISD, which is where I had my first experience in elementary. Okay. Fell in love with elementary. I love the hugs, the enthusiasm the positive environment that's me I'm sure right. you know that oh yes definitely <laughs> made my way a little further north with my family to Conroe ISD where I was there for eight years I'm um, at a junior high um, enjoyed that enjoyed working with the kids and then finally I've made my home here at Willis ISD mm -hmm. I'm so excited to be here I, I love being here awesome love the sense of family here well we're excited to have you here and uh, and you have an interesting background from the elementary then to middle now you're coming back yes. because you understand the elementary world, yes. but you also understand where you're sending kids That's right. and, and what they're going to need when they get there. Uh, and I, I've got an answer to this question. I'm going to, cause you told me this a while back, so I'll bring it up after you answer it. But <laughs> why did you come to Willis? <sighs> Oh, well, <laughs> I have a friend here who um, is our bilingual director in Willis ISD, right. and um, I actually have been in contact with her um, ever since her son was in kindergarten. I was his mm -hmm. elementary AP. Right. We followed each other into Conroe, and he was a student in Conroe, and um, she and I worked together there. Um, she came up to Willis, and when I would see her, she would there's always a smile on her face, right. and she'd say, Tamara, you've got to come to Willis. You've got to get here, and she says, we, we've just got to make it happen. And, and when I came, I knew exactly this is this is where I belong. That's awesome. Well, the first time I was in sitting in her office, uh, she made a statement that I won't forget. She may not remember. She said, I'm here because I want to be here. That's right. And that's, right. Uh, that's uh, as, as leader of the district, that's all you can ever want. You, you want people here uh, that want to be here because then you know it's it's more than a job. That's right. It's not about a check on the 1st and 15th. Don't get me wrong. If it's late, we're going to hear about <laughs> it. We've got to be there on time. But you're here because you want to be here. Yes. And uh, that's the type of people we have to have to be successful. So uh, talk a little bit about your education background mm -hmm. and uh, how long you've been in education mm -hmm. and, and your different things there. All right. Well, I'm sure you can't tell or I hope you can't tell. This is my 21st year in education. Um, I have enjoyed um, teaching many different areas. And my heart really is I'm the heart of a teacher. I love teaching. I love working with students. Um, I'm very excited about instruction, instructional practices. Um, that is my specialty. Um, I've worked with reading recovery, reading improvement. I've taught dyslexia students, um, Nighthouse Train, which is a very intensive um, dyslexia program that mm -hmm. I've worked with. Um, I've even gotten into a little social studies. I've taught social studies, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, um, U.S. history, um, and then even some one-on-one -on -one working with students. And mm -hmm. if you ever see me on campus, you'll know I'm in the classrooms. I'm talking with teachers. Um, I think teachers feel really um, good when they ask a question that's instructional related, and I can give them um, just so many different aspects of it. I've spent some time as an instructional specialist, mm -hmm. um, and so I go in with just a wealth of knowledge, but also just a heart to teach right. a heart to make learning fun interesting engaging for students right well and y'all can tell the enthusiasm I can see it on her face <laughs> but I know you can hear it in her voice and that's how she is every day every day and, and every I can day. tell you when, when I made uh, a change I had moved the former principal there uh, Kim Sprayberry to Lynn Lucas to be the new principal there 
And her staff was, you know, anytime you make principal changes uh, for my popular principal, they're not happy. <laughs> and then they worry, who you bringing, who you bringing, who you bringing. And after uh, we introduced Tamara and after her initial meeting with a few folks, I started getting very positive emails and text messages. Good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and so you've made an immediate impact. Thank and uh, you. when I come to campuses, anytime I, I try to get a feel for uh culture atmosphere yes. how are people feeling am i see smiling faces do i not and uh some people might say well you're superintendent people always smile well i can usually tell a fake smile from not unless you're just really good at it right. and uh, there are lots of smiles at canon and uh, you're doing some good things there and i know we're looking uh, forward to it what are some goals you've been there now over yes. the summer you're mm-hmm. kind of getting your feet wet you've been here a couple weeks yes. seeing the kids you're meeting some parents what are some goals that you have for the campus this year okay um to kind of encapsulate it in, in kind of a catchphrase that i'll explain is um, moving from good to great mm-hmm. our theme this year is we are game changers Um, Not unlike many elementary campuses, the overall theme is superheroes, but a game changer is a superhero. So we spent some time during staff development to talk about that and what it meant. Um, I shared with the staff that we are creating a new superhero. It's us. What are those qualities that we want to have that we'll share with our kids, our community, our parents, what a superhero is, what a game changer is. Um, Some of the things we'd like to implement and I'd like to implement is just um, more interventions for the kids, not only lower level kids who are struggling, but for our gifted and talented kids. We want something for every kid no kid falls between the cracks no kid feels left out school is a place where they want to be um, just a little aside I was in a classroom earlier today and um, there was a student getting ready to go home he got that notice to go home and his head hung down because he was so sad about it and his teacher said don't worry you're coming back and he went Phew. And for me, <laughs> as the principal, awesome. yes, it's so awesome. Um, I love the students. Um, we're talking about interventions, making sure that every kid has something. Um, you will find an expansion of club and activities at Cannon. I really would like to develop leadership potential, leadership qualities awesome. in our students. We started off the year already with our book fair, but the day before our book fair, we had a guest author in our building. Um, our mission at Cannon is to provide students with real world experiences. Mm-hmm. So, of course, if we're teaching writing, we need to have an author there. So we had an author who talked with the kids. She shared about the writing process. Those are the types of activities and programs that I'd love to bring to Canon to help our students move from good to great, to raise the bar, to move that progress from just meeting standard to exceeding and blowing the top off of everything we do. Well, that is awesome. Yes, she told me about that. I had stopped by to see her, and I just missed the author. She had ran out for lunch, but I got to see the book fair, and, and she told me that what a great way to – because a lot of times uh, it's, it's kind of like science. When you talk about writing, kids aren't real thrilled about writing. <laughs> they like to read, yes. especially if it's something they're interested in. But to hear an author and what do they do and see their books, uh, I, I think it brings in. Because kids are like, well, when am I ever going to do this? Why, why do I have to do this? You, you kind of brought that to, to real life with them. So I'm sure that was an exciting time. Yes, first of many. Yes, first of that's many. that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, also, and... Tamara did not get to see the pickup drop-off lines prior to this year. Her campus at Cannon was part of uh, some driveway extensions that we made. And what we did, County Line Road, which runs in the front of Cannon, has always had a, a, a tough time because our traffic would literally block County Line Road. You mm-hmm. couldn't get by. So we made some changes. Now cars stack on uh, Cannon Drive, and we have a new driveway extension that has basically cleared uh, County Line Road. Has any of your parents said anything about not having to wait out on the main road anymore? (laughs) Very excited, I can tell you. Good. I've got great positive comments. Um, This is the best car rider pickup drop-off line I've ever seen in my life, is one comment that I've heard. So I think they're very enthusiastic about it. We need to make sure they get those positive comments out on Facebook (laughs) for us so people can can see what we're doing so uh well listen we are uh, thrilled to have you here thank you uh, thank you i know you're going to be a, a huge addition not only to canon but to our school district and uh we appreciate you thank you so much all right well thank you all very much for joining us this week for district dynamics join us next month at 11 a.m on wednesday october 12th as we talk about more exciting uh, education news in willis isd thank you
Thanks for checking out this production of Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's community radio station. For more information on this show and other shows on Lone Star Community Radio, check us out online at IRLoneStar.com. If you're interested in sponsoring a program on Lone Star Community Radio and reaching the local audience of Montgomery County on FM, Internet, TV, media, please call 936-647-5747 or contact us online at IRLoneStar.com. This recording is a Lone Star Community Radio production produced by the show host and Dick Schischler of Lone Star Community Radio. Interested in volunteering as a music DJ or starting your own talk show? Contact Dick Schischler at D-I-C-K at IRLoneStar.com or by phone at 936-647-5747.